apologies for the delay. We had some technical issues, but mums and dads, if you've got some kids watching, make sure they've got pens and pencils and they are ready to go because we've got an awesome live stream for kids this afternoon. It's not just going to be a good Friday, it's going to be a great Friday. So let's get this started. Yes, it is. Adrian Beck's Author Hangout live streams for kids. And this is going to be an awesome episode because I've got two awesome guests on today's show. Uh, first up, we're going to meet uh, a man I call by the nickname Crikey Boy, but his name is Chris Kennett. And he has illustrated heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of books, including Star Wars books. So if you love your Star Wars, then uh, you're going to love this because he's going to show you a little bit about doing Star Wars. But also he has written some books with his great friend, uh, co-creator, Nova Wheatman. She's going to be joining us too to help us get our brains ticking uh, with some creative challenges. Plus, I've got a special bookish game to play with them, which is called Oh My Word! Oh My Word! So that'll be, uh, that'll be interesting. They don't know what they're in for yet, but that'll be a lot of fun. Okay, without further ado, let us get, let us get our first guest into the show. He is the aforementioned Chris Kennett. He's awesome. Let's get him on board and have a chat and meet the amazing illustrator, Chris Kennett. Are you there, mate? He's coming through. Here he is. Chris Kennett. Hello. How are you going? Good, thank you. How are you? Excellent. Thank you for joining us. Now, Chris, we can see okay. over, this, over your shoulder there, you've got Star Wars posters on the wall. And, yes. And you've also got uh, Zooniverse books as well. They I are do. on the other yeah. side. So you are obviously an awesome author illustrator uh, <laughs> and you're involved in both Zooniverse and Star Wars. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how on earth do you become able to be part of the Star Wars universe like that? Well, the, the, the Star Wars story is um, just completely random and... Um, just one day in about, when was it, about 2015, I think it was, I had an, an email in my inbox and it just said Star Wars Little Golden Books and that was all it said. And I thought, oh, that sounds, that sounds good. You know, that sounds like the sort of thing I would buy. And uh, it wasn't until I opened up the email and actually started reading it properly um, that I found out they were inviting me to illustrate these golden Fantastic. books. So, yeah, it was completely um, out of the blue and quite unexpected but most welcome as well yeah a pretty amazing a pretty amazing um <laughs> email to receive would you like know, to, right yeah <laughs> would you like to illustrate for star wars uh and so yeah, then let me think on, about that for sure yeah let, let, yeah i'll have to really have a good think about that so how many <laughs> uh books did you end up doing for star wars sorry i've got my helpers wandering through but that's all part of the show uh how that's many books right. did you end up doing for star wars uh i ended up doing five in total so i did um the empire strikes back yep yeah which is like a the full retelling of the movie awesome um and then we did some sort of broader um universe books about uh, the different characters that that exist in the star wars universe so there's i am a sith there that's all about the bad guys yes and then there's i am a stormtrooper so that's the stormtrooper um stormtroopers going through all the, all the eras of the star wars um uh saga from the clone wars all the way up to the um to the new movies like the sequels with um there's finn in the front there and um i am a droid so all about the the robots and droids of the star wars universe and then my absolute favorite one was uh aliens creatures and beasts which is a nice ginormous one i got to do and, and that creatures got, and beasts. yeah so that got um reissued here in australia through hardy grant egmont which is a nice um uh, link into the Zooniverse books as well. So uh, yes, yeah, so same publishers behind the creatures, Alien Creatures and Beasts, and Zooniverse. So Zooniverse yep. is the books that you've written with, alongside Nova Wheatman, correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, no, Nova wrote them, and I got to do the, the fun illustrations. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, we, that's why we're going to meet Nova later because she's going to help us with yeah, some cool. story starters. And also, okay. well, I've got a bookish challenge for you both, which neither of you know what you're in for. Mm -hmm. But no. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm going to put you to the test. It's going to be great. I'm okay, and let's excited. get this started though with our first segment. So let me grab yes. my ukulele 
for a segment that we like to call Ready, Set, Draw. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. So what yes. we need to do with Ready, Set, Draw is we need to ask you kindly, if you wouldn't mind sharing your screen there, Chris, because Absolutely. I have sent through, I've sent through some squiggles from some kids and it's a little bit yeah. like the good old show, Mr. Squiggle, but we put you under the pump. Not only do you have mm. to turn squiggles into an amazing masterpiece, but you have to do it yes. within 30 seconds. Do you think you can do that, Chris? It's not a lot of time, I'm going to be honest, but <laughs> it's not. I'll, have, I'll have a crack. But you are that good that I think you'll be fine. Oh, you say that to all the illustrators. <laughs> I do, actually. Okay, I've got the PJ watch here. I'm going to get to my 30 seconds. Okay. Well, Are you ready? Sure. Let's get that squiggle up. Squiggle number one. Yeah, squiggle number one. Ready? Ready, go. set, go. We're oh, away. Okay. Um, hey. oh, wow, a tricky one, one actually. This. There's a lot to so work what? with. I'm going to... You're going to go upside to... down. Oh, sideways. Oh, I like I'm where you're going. Turn it around. Very interesting. Oh, I'm, I'm wasting so much time. <laughs> you are. You've got so, 12 seconds left. What are you going to do? So there's already a there's already a face here for me, I think. Yes. So it's a self portrait. A self portrait with one second left. And oh, done. Never so good. Okay. All right. Uh, That's fantastic. Now you can hear in the background just just how well it's gone down with the. I okay. don't. That was very frightening. I'm, I do apologise. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, uh, everyone's a critic, Chris. Everyone's a critic. Hey, I'm used to that. That's, but, uh, that's a typical reaction for me. And I'm sure everything will be fine now. But look at that. That's fantastic. That's uh, that actually reminds me a little bit of the old show Rugrats. What have you? Can you talk us through oh, yeah. something here? Yeah. Yeah. No. That. That. Uh, it, that wasn't in my head, but uh, now you say it, I can absolutely see that. Yeah. <laughs> Looks awesome. All right. Are you ready for challenge number two? Oh, yes. Okay. I'll get rid of those. Challenge number two. Let's go. Are we ready? Ready. Set. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Ready, set, go. We're okay. away. Ah. Oh, who sent? Uh, Squirt sent that in. Squirt that's sent that a, one in. Yes. That's a, that's, a, that's a nice one. Thank you, Squirt. Yeah. Oh, I, I knew you'd do that. I knew it. I had a feeling. It was Fantastic. already, it's hard to come for me. Uh, 15 seconds left. Um, I'll just give him some crazy hair. How about this? Awesome. We'll get I some sort of Five seconds, Zooniverse. Three, like it's a, two, it's an early Zooniverse one. Character. Awesome work. You heard the chicken. So that's the end of, that's <laughs> the end of that picture there. We've got a, what would you call that? Is that a uh, elephant? It, it's again, a, it's a bit of a again the critics are loving what you're putting out there, Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, Sorry about I, I'd, that. I'd call that more of a more more of a mammoth. Yeah, and you know mammoths are scary, so I understand the reaction there. Yeah, that <laughs> can be scary, but I don't yeah. I don't take it as a comment on your uh, your uh, drawing ability because they're some of the best squiggles we've had all week. That's fantastic. All right, <laughs> excellent. Bert, if you're out there, I hope you're watching and you're enjoying this. Woolly mammoth looks like it's a receding hairline mammoth, which uh, nothing wrong with that. It's okay if it's no, going look. marching back a touch. That's it. That's <laughs> it. And who who sent the first one? CB. CB. Thank you, CB. Yes. CB. With the, uh, funny face. Awesome. Okay, Chris. Yes. Now you're warmed up. We want you. Obviously, you're a Star Wars illustrator, and this is why I'm sure many kids are pretty excited to uh, to be tuned into this. We're mm -hmm. going to get you to teach us how to draw a Star Wars character. Now, do you have one in mind that you would like us to, to try and draw along with you? I do. And um, I, I do this one quite often as well if I'm, if I'm doing any sort of visits or workshops and things like that. And the reason I choose it is because it's, um, it's, it's some really simple steps to follow. And also, I've, I've got your, the, um, your author hangouts all week. And one recurring theme that with all the illustrators... Yes. is using basic shapes. So this is something using really, really basic shapes. And we're going to use um, this as a little bit of a, a guide. Ooh, I've got so a straight away. It's going to be. You think you know who that is? Yeah. Party on Darth. 
<laughs> yeah, he's a pretty iconic character. Yeah. But as soon as I look at characters like this, the first thing I see is um, shapes. So that's what we're going to do with Darth. I'll just leave him there, just sneaking in the corner there. Awesome. Hopefully so the shapes is a bit of a thing, isn't it? So you, you, you yes. get your shapes right and then you build from there. Exactly. Awesome. So the good thing about Darth Vader is, are we still got my screen up here? Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do right in the center of my page yep. is just a little circle like that. Awesome. Okay. Kids at home. You got your pens and pencils out, starting with a circle right in the center. Yep. Even I can handle that a bit. Yep, that's a pretty good starting point. So from there, what we're gonna do is gonna do two lines coming down like that. So oh, it yes. looks a bit like a party hat. Party hat, yeah, I like it. it does look yeah, like a Yeah, or a bubble hat. hat, something like that. Yep. And then I'm gonna do two more circles either side, and then I'm gonna join up the bottom like that. Awesome, got it. So that's a really good starting point. What I'm going to do that you could get you could get quite um, detailed with it. Yeah. But I'm going to keep it sort of simple. This might be tricky, but I'm going to draw a, like an inside line. Oh, okay. So you want like an that. inside circle? Not oh, an inside circle. Inside triangle. How am I going? <laughs> you failed the shape test. I did. There we go. Okay. And then from there, just some ver some vertical lines coming down like that. Awesome. Okay. Now, kids at home, if you're drawing along with this, I reckon you might start have have worked out what part of Darth we're actually drawing at the moment. I think I don't think it's his yeah. ear. I don't think it's his no. foot. I've got a no. feeling it might be something else, but uh, we'll get to that. Yes, you're, I think you're on the right track. So another, so we've basically got a triangle here. What I'm going to do is two more triangles, but they're going to be sort of upside down in relation to the first one like that. Okay, upside down triangles alongside the original triangle. Yes, so they look like ice cream cones, but without the ice cream. Without the best bit, Chris. Ah, that's coming. <laughs> that's coming, ice cream's coming. <laughs> yeah. You hear that kids, ice cream's, ice cream's coming. coming. Awesome. I'll just, I'll zoom in a little bit. Ooh. I'll zoom in a little bit closer. So, on top of your ice creams, cones, you had the ice cream. Of course you do. I would, I myself would go for a nice hokey pokey or a, a peppermint choc. Yes, mint, mint choc. Mint choc. Good choice. Yeah. My girls so probably that, go for the, uh, the rainbow. Okay, cool. I can see what's happening here. Now we've put our ice cream scoops on top. Yes. We're starting to get, a, uh, we're starting to get closer, I reckon. I reckon it's you see the face kind of starting to emerge, can't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Now, do you know, remember when you were drawing um, pictures in school or even sometimes pictures in it as an adult, when you were doing um, birds up in the sky? Yes. They would always kind of look like this, wouldn't they? Absolutely. Just really simple birds. I'll get rid of them. What we're going to do is we're going to have a great big bird coming down and he's swooping down to get the ice cream. Oh, of course he is. A great big swooping bird trying to get the ice cream. Okay. Yep. But mine's so a little bit wonky. Sitting right in the need, middle. Sitting right in the middle, yep. And then from there, what we're gonna do, this is where the ice cream analogy will end. <laughs> we're just gonna do some lines coming down either side like that, and that's gonna okay. be the sides of Darth's uh, helmet. Yeah, like awesome. Oh, kids. If you're drawing along with Chris right now, like I am as well on this side of the stream, it's actually starting to look like Darth, mine's starting to look like Darth Vader as well. This is fantastic. Yeah, and so and basically, this is basically what I used um, to do Darth Vader in in the um, in the books. So you can see here. Yes, it's kind of it's you know I spent a little bit more time on that obviously, but the 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 simple shapes are still there. Like the, you can still see them. Awesome. Okay, so from up from the center of the bird, I'm just going to do a big oblong rectangle. I like to think that might be a wafer. Yeah, a or, wafer or a giant the, chip. A giant chip that the, sea, yes. that the seagull's carrying on its back. Yep. So quite a, quite a high chip too, so to speak. Yeah. So because his helmet goes quite a quite a long way up over his head. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't matter. Like it can be. You know, whatever whatever size you like, really. And then from the side of the chip, we're just going to do 
some curves down like that, but we're not going to we're not going to join up those lines. We're going to leave a gap. Okay. So we and then that's just going to allow us to draw the outside of the helmet like that. Awesome. So we do those curves, and we get to basically where I suppose you'd call them eyebrows are, and at that point you do a straight line. Yes. yes. Awesome. To go down the sides, and his and helmet has emerged. <laughs> yes. Awesome. And that's essentially it. And then you can sort of add like those eyebrows, like you said. Oh, yeah. And All maybe eyebrows. join the, the sides of the, the face like that. My, mine's have gone a little bit wide, actually. My Darth Vader has got quite a large head. Yeah, well, you should see mine. <laughs> mine's, <laughs> mine's the Darth Vader as a toddler, I think. <laughs> But it's, it's all about practice and having like one or two goes. As long as you can remember the, the initial steps, um, then you can start to experiment with proportion and, and just getting it how you like it. Yeah. And we can draw some you know, extra details, maybe some ridges on the nose. Um, you can maybe draw some extra elements around the oh, eyes yeah. and just sort of add in some more detail. Maybe the helmet can go around the back behind oh, everything. Yeah. And then it all starts to... Um, come together and, and the picture emerges. So it looks like quite a complicated picture when you look at it like that. Yeah. When you break it down to all those those steps and those really simple shapes, um, that's a really good place to start and, yeah. and build up as you go. It's a collection. Don't of get shapes. overwhelmed by all of the all of the detail. If you can focus in on the really um, basic, simple things, um, then you can keep adding to it. Love it. Love it. Okay, great. Well, I might just get you to jump out of that for a moment. I'll show everyone uh, my version, which is actually not too bad. Uh, How'd you go? Well, let me show you. Let me show you. You be the judge. I shouldn't say it's not too bad. <laughs> Let's see what you think. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's uh, my version of Darth. There he is. Oh, that's, that's excellent. But as you say, he, he, yeah, I, I suppose slimmer's probably, a slimmer head looks more like Darth, doesn't it? it it's a little bit wide. <laughs> Yeah, look, you know, with the benefit of a bit, a bit more time and a bit more, um, you know, practice. Yes. We can, um, we can work on it. We can find I could be doing golden books for Star Wars is what you're saying, Chris. Yeah, what, what have I done? <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> All right, that's awesome. Job. So well done. We've got, uh, we've got some great um, squiggly challenges. Now we know, all know how to draw Darth Vader, which is just cool and great. And I'm yep. sure lots of kids are, are drawing along and you can fill in all the details. Maybe do the big Hopefully. cape and all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. But now... As I promised before, we want to get your writing partner, your creative partner on board from, from the Zooniverse. So I yep. am going to welcome to the live stream your very good friend and mine, the wonderful Nova Wheatman. Nova Wheatman, are you there and can you hear us? Yes and yes, I can. Hello. Fantastic. Hello, Nova. How are you going, Nova? I'm good. Thanks, Adrian. How are you? Yes, good. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Now... We are very excited to have you on board today because not only uh, have we learnt about how to do Darth Vader and all that sort of stuff, but now we get to learn a bit more about Zooniverse. And then also yes. we're going to put you on the spot with a uh, bookish challenge. Which I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. you, are you a quick thinker? Like when you have to do charades no. and things like that? No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be fantastic. It's going to be great. It's not going anywhere. Uh, okay. Great. Now, what you might not have seen, Nova, is that I've had uh, my, my daughters are helping out all through and, and they, um, they, they got a little bit upset earlier, but I'm sure when they come back in, they'll be just absolutely fine. So if that happens, just, uh, just go. It wasn't my fault. It's all part no, of the show. It wasn't, it wasn't what did you do, fault. Chris? No, no, completely not his fault. <laughs> his Darth Vader was just too scary. I think that was the problem. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do uh, two segments with the three of us. And the first of those yep. two segments is a segment called, ooh, here we go, Story <laughs> Starters. Hello. Yes. <laughs> so the beauty of having Nova in is that Nova is excellent at coming up with stories because she is actually uh, teaming up with another terrific author named Emily Gale, and they have a... Uh, a course called Nova and Emily, which is yeah. <laughs> creatively titled, I must say. <laughs> How did you come up with that? <laughs> it's, it's inspiring, isn't it, really? <laughs> yes. The course is better than the title, can I just say? <laughs> yep. but, uh, this is, and this is a course for kids, is that right, uh, Nova? 
It is for kids. It's 10, uh, basically we've designed it as 10 classes and each class will teach you a different aspect of writing. So genre, choose your own adventure, character dialogue, and we've given the kids time to kind of do little activities so that each, each kind of class is designed for an hour, I suppose. Um, yeah, so it's great. Okay, so creative kids that are watching and might want to jump on board of that uh, it sounds excellent. So check that out. Yes, on our website. Yes. What is your website? Yeah, do you know it off by heart, Nova? I do. It's called. <laughs> it's great. Emily and Nova. <laughs> dot it's Emily and Nova. W W E B L Y dot com. So there you go. Very easily. Awesome. I think I talked over you then, uh, Nova. So one more time, give us that website, okay. please. It is Emily, E-M-I-L-Y and A-N-D, Nova, N-O-V-A, uh, dot Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y dot com. Awesome. Get on board Beautiful. if you feel like you'd like to uh, be creative and come up with some great stories yep. from Emily and Nova and they'll steer you in the right direction. And you as will. evidence that they'll steer you in the right direction, we're, we're doing the story starters <laughs> segment right now, okay? So it's we've been doing story starters. We've been doing this all week. Uh, on the live streams for kids, the author hangout. And pretty much we're coming up with different ways to get those kids' brains ticking. Now, this afternoon, you might have a bit of spare time, kids. Uh, so we're gonna plant a seed. We're gonna start a story in some way. And when you have a bit of spare time this afternoon, we'd love it if you could continue the story somehow. Yep. Now, we have asked for uh, some animal suggestions from kids uh, because there's something really special that you guys do when you do school talks, isn't there, about how you come up with uh, creatures. In fact, it's inspired by Zooniverse itself. How does Zooniverse yep. all work? Chris, do you want me to answer? Yes. <laughs> okay. Please. So basically the rules of Zooniverse are that the character, Noah, the main character, has two, um, some special dice and a special book. And he rolls the dice and the dice tells him what page number, Chris is showing you these details while I'm talking, yep. uh, what page number to turn to in the special book. And on that special book is an animal and he draws half of the two animals for the dice that he rolls. And then he puts them together and he turns a, a sort of um, like a sand, you know, what are they, an hourglass. And as the sand falls through, the creature comes to life. Fantastic. And when that creature comes to life, it's all sort of everyone's happy and it doesn't cause any chaos and everyone just lives happily ever after and it's a really nice <laughs> sort of moment. Is that yeah. right? Yes, yes. We have no drama whatsoever. No, it comes to life and creates as much havoc as it can. But the creatures we've created mostly are lovely, um, even if they're part dinosaur, you know, or part whatever, whatever the creatures are, even if they're kind of ominous creatures, they're still... Spider. Kind, I suppose, aren't they? There you go. Yep, Spidosaurus. They're just misunderstood, favorite. these com combo creatures, aren't they? They're, I mean, they mean well. We just need to get to the bottom of what they really want out of life. Yeah, they want to, yeah. They want to be loved. They just want to be loved. We all just want to be loved. <laughs> Even creatures that are combined with two different animals, they just want to be loved. And that's a good That's message. right. Yes. <laughs> all right, so yes. we're going to... Uh, what I thought we might do is something that I'm sure you guys would do in plenty of schools when you were visiting yep. schools. Um, and that is combine two animals together to come up with a brand new creature. And perhaps yes. kids could use that creature and write their own Zooniverse inspired story. Yep. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Sounds that awesome. Excellent. Well, I had a, I've got a few that have come through as suggestions and I'm just going to, I'm just going to pick two if you don't mind. I'm going to okay. pick, I'm going to, I'm going to pick Warthog. Yep. Excellent. Warthog would be good. And, and I'm going to pick, Oh, uh, a squid, warthog, and a squid. A squat hog. Wow. A squat hog. That's right. Yeah. Now I don't know whether I've made that way too tricky for you or not, Chris. But um, oh, it's easy. What are you talking about? Never too good to me. Is it Chris? <laughs> okay, so I guess what happens when you guys write the story? Nova comes up with the most crazy two animals that she can think of, throws them together, and says, "Good luck, Chris." Yeah, yeah, she's never never dropped a squat hog on me before. <laughs> I never thought right, I'd say well, that it's, sentence. It's, it's, it's <laughs> never... Weird tentacles. They're not tentacles. What yeah. are they? Are they legs? Or are they tentacles? Yes. They're legs. Well, yeah, as, as Noah explains. No, as no, Blue explains in... Um, I think they're squid tentacles. Is that right? Well, I, think, I think Noah calls... Uh, Blue calls them legs. But but that's octopus. Tentacles, legs. That's octopus, octopus Chris. Yeah. 
So oh, come on, Chris. You've yes. got to get your octopus and your squid right. I mean, Chris? what is this? <laughs> All right. This is why I don't write the books. This is why I just do the pictures. <laughs> so, Chris, if we could, if you could do us a favour and share your screen, and you're going to show us what a squat hog might look like. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, <laughs> I've got. I've got a lot of hope that this is going to be an amazing creature, which is going to inspire okay. all the kids to write their own sport hog adventure. So what I'm going to do, this is what I do. I'll give you a little um, insight into my process here. I'll usually do like a really rough underdrawing or something like this, just to get the basic shapes of things. And the Zooniverse characters have nice, big bulgy cartoon eyes like that. So then I would think about maybe his nose coming up like this. And warthogs have nice big tusks. They do. They is it Pumbaa like or Timon is the warthog? Who, which one's the warthog from the Lion King? Is it um, Pum Pumba. Pumba. Yeah. yeah. He's the one with the gas problem. He is, yeah. And yeah. so they right. might have a, a bit of a uh, some ears like this. So you've got a lot in common with warthogs then, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I actually, I ground down my tusks for the for this video. I see, so I see. Normally, they'd be showing. I see. So, Nova, is this uh, is this is sort of how you would? I'd imagine you'd be saying, "No, Chris, bigger tusks." You know, round or no, I, I totally defer to Chris when it comes to drawing. <laughs> I have no talent whatsoever, and I look at him and I just think that's pretty amazing. So it is amazing, isn't it? Oh, thank you, Nova. I'm totally delighted by it. So, <laughs> and often I'll look at it and go, that's good, because I actually didn't have any idea what that animal looked like, and now I know. <laughs> that's right. right, yeah. So here's, here's a good trick. Like, when you've got to draw an, uh, an animal like a, um, an octopus or a squid, you've obviously got eight tentacles to be dealing with. Um, it's good to have like maybe th three or four showing in the foreground and then you can sort of tuck the rest mm. behind. So you don't have to get bogged down with all the, with all the rest of the detail. So again, it looks more complicated than it, than it really is. Mm. Okay. So you do okay. the four at the front and then you have a f four at the back. And yep. So then okay. I'll drop that down. Oh, interesting. And now, so what I'm doing here is I'm working with layers and I'm just dropping down that. So it's almost like putting a piece of tracing paper over the top awesome. of it. In fact, you've done some amazing things with layers recently, which we might, we might have a look at in just a moment before we do our amazing challenge, which Nova's looking forward to. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm trying, to, yep. I'm trying to imagine a story for this poor little creature. That, uh... <laughs> is, is it going to be aquatic or is it going to be like Lovely. running out, around on the ground? So I think that that's a good thing to um, point out to kids who want to come up with their own Xenoverse creature. It's really good if you can come up with something where the two halves are not necessarily um, kind of well linked, I guess. So one, exactly, one might like being in the water, the other one might not. One might like eating meat, one might like eating vegetables, which means that they try and eat each other. Whatever the kind of parts <laughs> are to drama, Anything you can think of is really good to make it more difficult for that creature to get along with each other. Okay. So, so in this say... case, I think... Oh, sorry, Chris. I was going to ask you, Nova, a drama is an important part of writing a, a good story? Yes, definitely. So I think with um, the lovely thing about the Zooniverse books really is that boys come up with the character and then there's kind of three beats of drama. So three things happen. Possibly it's quite different to the way we'd normally write a story. It's almost like writing a short animation sort of 10 minute episode, which is kind of where I came from before I wrote books. So 10 minutes, you know, if I was looking at it as a TV episode, it would be the setup, then three things would happen and then they'd resolve putting the character back in the book and letting it be a drawing again. Um, but definitely you need things to happen, like really good meaty drama so that the reader is interested in what, what the story is, I suppose. Okay, mm. so for kids at home who are thinking, okay, I'm going to write a story about this uh, squat hog. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have to be careful how you say that. It just it doesn't sound quite right. Um, it does. No. How good is that? That looks fantastic. Is that it, uh, is what, so what would you say, Nova? What would be the first thing they should do? They've seen this awesome picture. Let's just take that in for a moment. How cool is that? It's just come right in front of us. The squat hog. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Just come to life in front of us. 
what would be the first thing the kids should do as a story starter? What should they uh, do with this character to get their short story started? I think, first of all, they should definitely have a desire to take their character outside because it's not anywhere near as much fun if your character is just in its in your bedroom. So you've got in Noah in the Zooniverse books, Noah, Noah always smuggles the creature into school, and then the creature usually makes all sorts of problems at school. But I'm thinking a squat hog, you could take him to school and maybe it's swimming sports day. And so then you've got this oh. half aquatic creature that wants to be in the pool and this poor warthog kid that doesn't want to be in the pool. So if you come up with all sorts of kind of ideas for little beats that could happen in the story where it might make it really complicated for the boys to have to solve everything. That's Love how it. I'd start it. I was going to do Imagine it. Imagine taking the squat hog to um, swimming day. That'd be fantastic. I wonder, <laughs> how, I wonder how we'd go. <laughs> it would win. It would yeah, win, it would. I think. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> he'd win and then he'd eat his kickboard or something at the end. Yeah, but it could yeah. be like, it almost could attach itself to the back of Noah and be Noah's legs and kick really fast and have yeah. Noah winning a race. That oh, never fantastic, I love it. Well, that or is steal awesome. steal everybody's food. Yeah, yeah. he would. Oh. He would. Yeah. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Chris and Nova, for your story starter. How cool is the squat hog? That's brilliant. <laughs> hey, um, Chris, while we've got I feel a book coming being on. shared, I, I, I really like the squat hog. I'm, I'm going to write a story about the squat hog myself. Um, so kids, <laughs> if you write some short stories, please let us know. We'd love to see what happens to squat hog. We I'll definitely story. would. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Chris, while you've got your screen there, we were talking about layers yep. just before. And Yes. I heard you were telling me recently that something amazing, Disney are doing something amazing uh, at the moment with their backgrounds. What's all that about? Well, yeah, in, in this time of uh, social isolation and Zoom meetings, as we are currently participating in, um, Disney and Pixar have released all of their, well, not all of their, but just some of their um, background art from their movies. From their movies. So, from their movies. So you can actually put them in your, in your background of your Zoom meeting. Um, so that was their intention. Um, but what I decided to do with them was to put my own characters with within that. the scene. Fantastic. So this is obviously Monsters, Inc. here. So, hey, hang on so, a second. So did you, you drew the, um, the Sully and Mike, yeah? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Correct. Because it looks like so I have straight from the movie. Oh, thank you. That's a, that's a lovely compliment. Um, so what I'm trying to do is is it's a bit of a, an exercise for me more than anything else in terms of matching the lighting of the scene. Yep. Um, you know, where the light's coming in um, from up here, whoops. And um, basically drawing in a different way. Obviously the Squat Hog, the Zooniverse books require a, a certain way of drawing and middle grade and junior fiction um, novels require that. That sort of fun, loose um, black and white line art. Um, whereas this is more sort of a picture booky style, I would I would say, yeah. and this is probably closer to the Golden Book style Star Wars um, stuff. that I use with the well, Star Wars as well, although not as well. quite this cartoony. Um, but what this allows me to do is just I can switch them off. So there's the oh, yeah. there's the actual did. background. Yep. Yep. So that's the the proper still from the movie, if you like. Yep. And there's my characters on top. Great. Right. And have I have. Some, have you got any others there? Yes, I've been doing a lot. So this is, this is my own boredom buster. This is what I've been doing to fill in the time. Um, oh, oh, so we've got, we've got um, Carl Fredrickson from Up. Love it. And then we've got Ratatouille. Yeah, nice. I just did this one um, the other day. And again, uh, what, what this program allows you to do is just, um, just work with all your, all your layers, as we were talking about there. So there's Remy there. Um, you should you should be seeing me opening up all these yes, can, um, yeah. folders and it's fascinating. So this one here is that's the nose layer. Yep. So you do so each actually, bit separately. I keep each bit separate. Yeah, wow. that's just just something I do, and it it just protects me later on if I have to make any changes. And the good right. thing about it is, for example, so I've got the eye folder here, and the eyeballs. There they are. They're on their own layer, so you can actually oh, that's great. <laughs> move it around. So that, as an illustrator, that gives you lots and lots of options and lots of control over your illustration. Yeah. Um, let's say the, the art director said, let's have uh, Remy the Rat looking up at the spoon, then I can just simply do, do that. That's, that's and great. It's, a, it's that's as simple as that. 
I reckon the kids that are watching this, kids that are watching this, would be fascinated by by this. And I guess this is the sort of thing that um, if you keep your drawing, keep drawing as as long as you can, and keep improving, then you could get to Chris's amazing level. I suppose you you must have been a huge drawer when you were a kid, Chris. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I was I was drawing when I should have been working. <laughs> now I'm. <laughs> it's all paid off now, though. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. So. It doesn't matter what you're doing, I guess, if, you, if you're into playing the guitar, if you, if you play the guitar every day of your life, um, by the time you reach my age, you'll, you'll probably be pretty good at guitar, I would say. So <laughs> yeah. it's, all, it's all relative, isn't it, to, what, to what, our, what we like, what we like to do in our spare time. Yeah. And for the longest time, drawing was just something that was a hobby. It was just something that was a, a spare time. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic. Well, that's, that yeah. is awesome. All right. Well, we've got time for one more segment before we let you both go and get on with your lives. Uh, and that, that segment is the one that I've been looking forward to a lot. So we'll get you to jump out of that share screen there, Chris. Beautiful. And this is a segment that I like to call Boredom Busters. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Thank you, crew. Uh, awesome. So to bust boredom today, apart from looking at how amazing uh, your excellent drawings are, Chris, and um, also I suppose you could use you. that story starter as well to, to fill some time. But not only that, here's mm. a game that you might like to play with your family. And it's a game that I like to call, oh my word, okay? So you have to sort of sound a little bit like a posh grandma when you, when you do that because you can have a look here at the amazing artwork done by my crew. You can, you can basically see That's great. that it's a grandma Action. saying, oh, Brilliant. my word. Okay. So she's pretty posh, this grandma. But you two are wondering, <laughs> yep. how do I play this game? How do I keep my reputation intact? Well, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can. But you can't. No, no, hopefully you can. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to play, just before we end the stream today, we're going to play, oh, my word. Now, the loser. The loser has to look down their webcam and be a posh granny and say, oh, my word. But okay. before we get to the declaring a loser, which is always my favourite part of any show, <laughs> a loser, um, we're going to play, oh, my word, uh, in its entirety, which won't take long. Um, so what we do with, oh, my word is we start with a word and then you take it in turns and you change one letter and you've got to make another word. Okay. Oh, okay. So, for cool. example, if it was uh, bun, as in uh, hot cross bun, you could change the B to an F and have fun. Okay. Yep. So, we're going to give Wasn't you one thinking, minute but... to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could change, you might, you might be able to change it to bum, which is a good suggestion from my crew here. <laughs> so, so, keep all those sorts of things. It even mind. crossed my mind. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so, what we could do is we could start with any word. I'll, we'll leave that up to you to start with. Oh, in fact, I'll think of one in a moment. But the problem yes. is you don't want to be stuck trying to come up with a word when the one minute timer ends. Because if, you're okay. stuck, if the other person has the last word, then you have to look down the barrel like a posh old granny and say, oh, my word. Okay. <laughs> this is, this, I'm, not, I'm surprised this isn't on prime time television, this game. This but is gold. Maybe it'll like... be after this. I don't yeah. know why I've gone with my left hand. I, I'm going to have to swap around here. Okay, here we go. Oh my word. So, the, so we're going to start with, what word should we start with? I think we'll start with, um, <laughs> we'll start with. Squat hog. Oh. No. We'll start with, <laughs> we'll start, can, can, you, can you see that? Okay. We're going to start with, can you see that? that you the dark. Race? I'll use a darker, darker pen. A darker pen. Which, then that one okay. isn't a darker pen. But who, who goes first? I I do have ladies a, first. Here we go, finally. Okay, we're going to start with the word race. And we're going to let oh, Nova go first because Nova's so confident. Okay, so are we ready? Race. Oh, okay. Oh, I've got to get going too quickly. Crew, crew, help me out with the one minute. You're letting me down on the last hurdle. Oh, You're just sitting on the couch. Okay, I'll do it. All right. Oh, you just got to tell me when it gets to one minute. Can you do that? All right. We're away. Nova, go for it. Uh, face. Face. Perfect. Yep. Face. Um, with you. Fact. Fact. Oh, I like it. See, he's gone for... He's gone, it's not one minute yet. It couldn't possibly be. Packed. Keep, uh, I'm going to... Uh, 
Oh, that's 11. Okay. What was yours, Nova? Hacked. P-A-C-T. Hacked. Hacked. Uh, we've had some dissension in the ranks behind the scenes, but I'm overruling. Okay. I'll go back again. I'll go pace. Pace. Oh. Okay. Hey, uh, crew mem member number one, could you check when it gets to one minute on crew member number two? Okay. Pace. Lace. Lace. Okay. So, Chris, it's with you. And how much longer have we got to go? What are we up to? Lice. L I C E. Okay. What have nice. we got left? Nice. Nice. <laughs> 20 seconds left, I believe. 19. Um, 18. Rice. What was yours, Chris? Rice. 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 It's with Nova. Who's going to say all my word? Ripe. 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 10 seconds. 9, 8, White. 7, Four. 6, Fire. 3, Fire. Two, one, fire. and I got fire. <laughs> and that means Chris wins and Nova. Unfortunately, <laughs> Nova, I'm, I okay. really apologize for this, but Nova, you have lost okay. all my word. And you know what that means. We all need right. you to look down the barrel of your webcam and give us your best I... posh grandma accent. All right. Oh, my word. Fantastic. <laughs> what a way to end today's live stream with uh, wonderful technical difficulties all around, but I think we've had a lot of fun. So <laughs> thank you very much. It's, we've just got to one minute. That's excellent. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Chris, for showing us all your awesome drawing skills and your uh, challenges and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it was awesome. And thank you You're for all the beta stuff too. My pleasure. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and Nova, thank you for helping us get our creative minds ticking over. Check out Emily <laughs> and Nova uh, because that's, uh, that's an awesome uh, way of also getting your creative minds ticking over for kids. And uh, once again, well done, Chris, for uh, winning Oh My Word. Uh, <laughs> oh, my word! See, even, he, even as a winner, he's happy to say Oh My Word. So, you know, I secretly wanted to do it. So. <laughs> I think we all want to do it. In fact... As we say goodbye today, why don't we all end on a nice posh granny saying, oh, my word. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, my, oh my word. word. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>